What's up everybody, Tiankum here with Soya Quilting. What is wrong with our sewing machines? As you can see, I'm here in our tech department and you can see all the different machines here that are needing sewing machine repairs. But do they really? I'm gonna show you five DIY ways to fix your sewing machine at home. Let's get started. So guys, before I jump right on into this video, what I wanna say is I've got a normal basic sewing machine right here in front of me and all the five different tips I'm gonna give you apply to all sewing machines out there. But I wanna use something that everyone's pretty much familiar with. Now, if you hear a sound that's not the sound that your sewing machine should be making, something like this, for instance, you hear it? Okay. What's happening to your machine here is that you're getting a bird's nest underneath the machine. So if we really push it, you can feel like it's getting stuck. A lot of people will call this timing. A lot of people will say, well, it's because you didn't do this, that, or the other right. It's very simple. 99.9% .9 of all the times when this happens, you have a bird's nest underneath your machine. I'll show you what a bird's nest is too for anyone who doesn't know is you got all these strings up underneath here. They've wrapped around each other. Let me open up the machine to show you exactly what's happened. So when a bird's nest happens or everything's get tangled up underneath your sewing machine here, it's normally the same problem, which is right here. This is called your take up lever. This is what lifts the thread up and brings it back down in motion with your sewing machine. And if you see here, there's no thread in there. I've simply just missed my take up lever. So if I take my thread, I do just a quick re-thread here. Make sure it's inside of this take-up lever, which is visible from the outside of your sewing machine. When our cover is on, you still can see your take-up lever. It's just a little bit easier in this format to show you guys at home. Now that it's back up into the take-up lever, it's time to just re-thread our machine like we normally would. Clear out anything that might be getting in the way here. I've got a little bit of yellow thread from my bobbin there. And we're going to just re-thread our sewing machine. Super simple fix. It's just an easy re-thread, making sure our take-up lever has the thread in it. And it should now sound like a normal sewing machine. Just like that, guys, we have fixed this DIY problem. So DIY problem number two. Now, to better show this, I'm gonna slide this machine out of the way and show you a machine that has external tension discs. That way you can see how they operate and work. So guys, this machine right here, another basic machine, this is a forwards backwards machine, doesn't do anything else, but it has an external tension disc. This is just easier to show you guys at home. Essentially how a tension disc works. Imagine two plates being smashed together. That's essentially what our tension discs. If you put your pressure foot into the utmost right position, then these tension discs here have separated and they are open, okay? That allows your thread to easily glide into the tension discs. As soon as you put your pressure foot down, this now becomes tight, okay? Due to that tightness, we've now added tension to our thread and that's how our machine operates and runs. Now, what everyone does is that they try to thread their machine with their presser foot down. Let me show you what happens when you try to do that. So I have re-threaded my machine and with my presser foot down. Okay, now a lot of people think that you can just force it into place and you can, but it always leaves the possibility of something going wrong. So if I grab onto this, it should pull and have a lot of tension on it because my pressure foot's down. But you'll see here, there's no pressure. It just pulls right out of the machine. Now, if we were to sew like this, it's just gonna jumble everything up and give you a really bad looking stitch. And that's simply because we've missed our tension disc. Now, if I go back through this and I open up my tension discs, make sure my thread gets nice and put inside there. You can see I'm trying to pull on this and there's lots of tension on this. That's what is required for a sewing machine to make a stitch. So problem solving number two is make sure that when you re-thread your machine, it is inside those tension discs. 
So guys, DIY solve number three, and this one's a little bit more funny and humorous, but it is the truth, is we have to ask ourselves if we are tired. If we are sewing at 12 o'clock at night, two in the morning, four in the morning, chances are we're just too tired to be sewing. Now, a lot of machines that come into our building will hear from the client. They say, well, I was sewing last night, AKA I was sewing at two in the morning, and my needle broke or my thread was having break problems or whatever it may be. And it's always funny when we say, ma'am, that's not the right needle or ma'am, the thread that you have on there isn't for a sewing machine or whatever it might silly little thing be, but it happens all the time. So before you do anything, get a little bit of rest, sit back down at your machine, and just look for one second because you might just be doing something silly. DIY fix number four is a super easy one. It's just one that we never really talk about in the industry is that needles eventually go bad or become dull. Much like a pocket knife or, or kitchen knives, eventually they just become dull and need to be resharpened. In the case of needles, we just replace instead. Now, if you've done a larger scale project, call it a queen size quilt, you should be replacing your needle right after that. Essentially speaking, any eight hours of sew time will require you to replace your needle. So a dull needle, a lot of times, either the stitch looks a little bit weird or the machine is sounding weird. And I just put a really bad dull needle into this machine so you, everyone can hear it at home. Kind of making a thumping sound. Duh, 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 duh. As opposed to this sound, which is a good sounding needle. Number five, last DIY fix here, and this is always one that we probably get at least a dozen of these in a month. Someone comes in, my machine's not sewing quite right, and I've done everything. I've changed my needle, I've re-threaded things, it was early in the morning, I got some rest, and it's just a very simple fix. Make sure your bobbin is being put into your machine right. So the best rule of thumb on how to put your bobbin into your machine is you make the number six with your bobbin. So you see, I've got my circle here, my line going up, it makes the number six. Most all sewing machines take a bobbin going this direction. Some people are like, well, the thread should be pulling off counterclockwise, well, it needs to be pulling off clockwise. I found if you make the number six, you pick it up and you put it into your machine like that, it will be in properly. Then obviously go through your basic steps here on threading your lower section of your machine. And every section's a little bit different, but they normally arrows there to help you out. That right there solves so many of the problems that people are facing, because if you flip it over the wrong direction, then it can't catch the thread right. It's very, very simple, but it's more of a tip slash pro tip to show you how to put your bobbins in correctly. And that will work on machines like this where you drop the bobbin into them and it will also work on machines where you push the bobbin into the machine so it covers all bases there little bonus diy tip here your sewing machine is much like a sports car in the fact that you don't want to give it bad gas in the sewing machine world it's your thread what happens when you're not using a good quality thread is that the thread is uber linty which means you're stuffing lots of lint into your machine as you are sewing, which eventually gums up the machine. Not only that, a less quality thread is prone to more breakage, it's prone to get more tangled than if you use a good quality thread, which will just save you in the long run. Make sure you try out these tips before you bring it into your local quilt stores, because we don't want it to end up here. We rather you have it in your homes, working and sewing. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and don't be afraid to share it with your friends. Not only that, guys, all the products that you've seen here to maintain your machine, the machines themselves, even the quilt behind us, is available on our website, soyaquilting.com, and we'll catch you on the next video. See ya.